uh, pain. We've all experienced it at some point or another in our life. It's not something that is unique. It's not, in general, a disease. It's the alarm signal that goes on when something is wrong. However, sometimes this alarm signal doesn't stop, even though when you take care of the problem that has caused the alarm initially. And this is where we need intervention to stop it. This is what we call chronic pain. It has been with us since our beginnings. In fact, our Via Dolorosa began with our first step on this planet. At least we can assume that. Uh, and it's so pervasive in our society that uh, it's best illustrated in this award-winning art and this quotation from Leitgis, which makes pain look like the single one voice that comes from planet Earth. Uh, it comes in different forms, actually. It can be caused by injury to one of your uh, somatic structures or your arm, your leg, your muscles, or it can be caused by internal organs, something going wrong inside your body. And the latter is the more important part because it is the one that we do not see. It is the pain that requires attention. It means that something is wrong with your internal organs. And uh, that's what we call visceral pain. And this is what we work on uh, at the Center of Pain Research at UMS. Visceral pain also has many causes. It can be caused by obstructions in your intestines. It can be caused by distensions of your intestines. It can be caused by inflammation of your liver, your pancreas. You've, it can be caused by cancer also. And sometimes by a very mild cold. Okay, so the intensity of the pain does not necessarily reflect the severity of the condition underlying it, but it always indicates that something is wrong. Our lab focuses mainly on a particular type of visceral pain, the one we call functional abdominal pain. What is functional abdominal pain? It's a pain that exists. Many of us has exp have experienced it, but it does not have a pathological cause. There is nothing wrong with your body, yet you feel the pain. You go to the doctor, the doctor examines you, x-rays are normal, blood tests are normal, everything is normal, yet the pain is there. This kind of pain is referred to as functional, not structural. It's not caused by a structural problem. Examples of this pain include irritable bowel syndrome. Examples of it can affect also your somatic structures. Fibromyalgia is a very common term that many of us have heard or experienced at one point or another. So this type of pain is a bit hard to deal with because we're so organ-oriented in our approach to treatment. We like to find a pathology, treat it, and deal with it. With this kind of pain, we have to step outside the colon. That's what I call it, thinking outside the colon when it comes to visceral pain. You cannot look at the organ. Nothing is usually wrong with it. You look at it, you exclude it. You look at the heart, you exclude it. Once we're there, we have to look at something else. The biggest culprit in this is really the nervous system, because this is where we store all our memories, this is where we store all our feelings and sensations, and this is where we experience our pain. So it has four components. A central component, your brain, your spinal cord, a peripheral component, the nerves that innervate your peripheral organs, an autonomic component. This is the automatic component of the brain that regulates the function of every other organ, and an enteric component. These are the neurons that line up all of your internal organs. Whenever something is wrong within all these components, you're going to experience it one way or another, either as a dysfunction or sometimes as pain. What happens when you're developing as a child determines also how the components of your nervous system develop. So any childhood experience can affect your adult behavior. And this is how we try to focus on an etiology or finding a reason or a cause for functional disorder. Many patients with functional abdominal disorders describe history of childhood pain or childhood abuse or uh, childhood procedures that were painful in nature. We try to model these. Of course, we cannot do build these models in human infants. We do what's ethically possible and we try to model them in animals. And we look at the developmental changes in the nervous system in the animal that has received pain as a neonate 
compare it to the one that has not received pain. And what we see is that the systems of the neonate that received pain has sensitized, it has changed, it has modified its development and skewed it towards a form that is more sensitive to any other uh, external stimuli, which would explain the hypersensitivity that we see in the adult or the pain experience that they report. This is what we try to study. We examine the mechanisms underlying these changes. We examine sometimes the genetic variations that can differentiate one organism from another. We examine the sex differences, female, male. How do the two develop in response to the similar stimuli? And also, uh, we try to reverse these things. We try to reverse them at different points. We try to reverse them in the neonate if there is a way to intervene and prevent the long-term development of these uh, afflictions, that's fine. If not, we have to be able to intervene later and stop it or reverse it. This is where our work uh, is today. In trying to prevent the long-term effects of the neonatal insult, we have come up with a new method. We call it neonatal cuddling. All of us love cuddling. It's a very innocuous and harmless thing to do. Actually, it's an expression of love. If we can cuddle the neonate in a simultaneous manner or in a simultaneous way when this neonate is experiencing pain, we have proven that this will minimize the long-term effect of the painful experience. It has the same effects as giving the neonate morphine without the side effects of morphine. So it's a very useful and helpful uh, strategy to prevent the long-term development of what we call chronic hypersensitivity. What if we missed that window where we can intervene and block the development of long-term sensitivity? Can we still come in later and treat the adult? And the answer, we hope, is yes. And this is what we're working on. We're working on a number of lines of research that show that we can, in fact, intervene and prevent or reverse this hypersensitivity that has developed. One of them is sex hormones. We think that sometimes uh, the level of circulating sex hormones can affect the degree of sensitivity of the individual. This is something we're studying with funding from the National Institutes of Health. Uh, another thing is what we call the neuroimmune system. Like your immune system in your body, your nervous system has its own immune system. This immune system, if it's wired and it's kick-started early on and remains active throughout your life, or overactive, I should say, throughout your life, can cause you to experience pain when there is no reason to feel it. In a subset of cells, microglia, uh, we try to study the substances released by those cells, how they interact with different neurons, what gets them to remain activated, how we can reverse their activation, and see if we can push a little bit the envelope of therapy to include uh, blocking the action of these cells. As a follow-up on our work on reversing visceral hypersensitivity in adults, we collaborated with a number of pharmaceutical companies, and we are in the process of developing a novel drug that could be used to reduce visceral pain. We have finished what we call the preclinical work. We have finished a number of clinical trials that show promise that this drug could help patients with functional abdominal pain. And we hope by the completion of these trials that we can offer society something. To summarize, what I'm trying to describe to you today is a model of what we call functional abdominal disorders. What can cause these disorders? How do they develop? What are the underlying neural mechanisms behind these disorders and how we could prevent them from developing or reverse them once they take place? Uh, we have shown that a neonatal experience, painful experience, can cause symptoms similar to functional disorders, like we've seen in irritable bowel syndrome patients or fibromyalgia patients. They include pain and hypersensitivity. We have seen that these could be prevented by intervening at the neonatal stage and cuddling the, uh, the subject. And we have seen that we could intervene later at the adult age and reverse these mechanisms. I hope this introduces you a little bit uh, to the kind of work uh, that we do. And uh, we're happy always to share our new findings with anyone who's interested. So feel free to call us.